The episode starts in a room where Juliana and Joe are held captive by the Yakuza. Frank and Ed are at the bus station, patiently waiting for Juliana, and pesters Frank to get into the bus, but he chooses to stay and search for his wife. At the Smith household, Thomas falls down the stairs, and his family rushes over to help him. Since Smith is the only one who knows about his son's condition, he asks his wife to tend to their daughters for school. This incident provides a harsh reminder that Smith needs to decide soon about his son because if the truth about his son's disease is revealed, the Nazis will take him not to forget the fact that they burn cripples every Tuesday. Back to Juliana and Joe. The two discuss Juliana's plans to flee with Frank. Meanwhile, the Yakuza interrupts their conversation and grabs Juliana. She is taken to a location where Lem and Karen have struck a deal with Teishi Akamura the leader of the Yakuza, for her release. The two resistance fighters spend 10,000 yen to have Juliana free, but Joe is priced at 50,000 yen, as he is a resistance member of a higher position. Additionally, Akamura does not give the resistance fighters the film due to the raid that their film caused on his business. Meanwhile, Smith is still dealing with a potential uprising against him. In a hospital, he visits Erich Reeder, the man who saved his life in an ambush many episodes ago, and tells him that Heydrich may be the culprit who wants Smith dead, but doesn't know why. He hands over Erich a note and says that if anything should happen to him, the message should be given directly to Hitler. Smith assures that although he doesn't think Heydrich and his men will come after Erich, he has a guard stationed outside his ward just in case. The show cuts to Tagomi's office, where Chief Inspector Kaido visits him and asks for records of the shipping trade in Osaka. He suspects that the Yakuza are smuggling heroin at the docks. After being released from the Yakuza, Juliana heads home only to be snatched by Ed in the street, and takes her to his grandfather's apartment, where she meets Frank. Juliana apologizes for not making it to the bus station. Frank, however, angrily confronts her. She details her whereabouts and asks Frank to help free Joe. At first, Frank refuses to give her 46,000 yen asking her why she cares about Joe so much. Juliana reasserts that she loves Frank, but she needs to save Joe's life as he had saved hers in Cannon City. Frank eventually agrees to pay the ransom on the condition that he delivers the money. In the following scene, Heydrich has had Wegener released from custody. They have a meal in a restaurant. Heydrich chastises Wegener for his treason the one where he handed the Heisenberg secret to the Japanese. After asking why he has not been killed yet, Heydrich tells Wegener that he has a new plan for him. He's going to Berlin with instructions to kill Hitler. Heydrich then threatens the lives of Wegener's wife and children if he fails to follow the instructions. Back in San Francisco, Frank retrieves his hidden gun and goes to the Yakuza to hopefully save Joe. At the docks, he hands over the ransom money to the Yakuza and Joe is delivered to him. Joe, however, doesn't want to leave without the film, so he takes Frank's gun and shoots the Yakuza men. They then grab the film and make a daring escape. Back at Ed's place, Ed's grandfather confronts Juliana for putting his grandson's life at risk. He threatens to call the Kempeitai if she doesn't leave the place within 10 minutes. At the same time, Joe and Frank are back from the docks. Juliana and Frank then get ready to leave the city finally. Ed gives them some money, bids farewell and promises to get rid of the gun, tucking it into his trousers. At his office, Smith talks to Captain Connolly who is particularly interested in Smith's whereabouts. Smith suggests that Connolly was the one who betrayed him under Heydrich's orders to assassinate him. Connolly admits he simply followed orders, but Smith then pushes him off the skyscraper. In the meantime, Juliana and Frank can't get on a bus since the bus terminals are now asking for sufficient identification. A Kempeitai officer yells at them to stop, and they split ways to later meet at a nearby school. Heydrich meets Wegener in his hotel room, and the two come into an agreement to assassinate Hitler in Berlin. This deal comes in consensus after Heydrich promises to free Wegener and his family's life once the deed is done. Later in a meeting with General Hada, Tagomi's use of Wegener finally comes to fruition. The general says that they can build their own Heisenberg device now. Tagomi, however, sees this opportunity as a means to gain parity with the Nazis so that both the Japanese and the Nazis could negotiate peace. However, the general retorts that the crown prince has changed his mind and intends to go to war if needed. After his attempted assassination, in the meantime, Akamura and Kaido discuss the sniper from the Crown Prince's assassination. Akamura tells Kaido that he believes he pursued a fake suspect, and that Kaido had known about it from the start. 
Kaido hid the truth to ensure that war didn't occur between the Japanese and the Germans. He eventually offers to give the German sniper's name in exchange for a very high price. As promised, Juliana and Frank meet at the school. While waiting for Joe, the two wander the hallways, disgusted at the sight of children's art forced upon by the Japanese. They enter the hall to watch the film using the school's projector. The film shows the aftermath of the atomic bomb explosion in San Francisco. Prisoners, including Frank, are in a line guarded by Nazi officers. An execution officer, dressed in a SS uniform, shoots each of the prisoners before reaching Frank at the end. As Frank and Juliana's gaze stricken at the aftermath, they finally realize that Joe is a Nazi as he is the execution officer, as shown in the film. After watching the film, Frank stands shocked while tears roll down Juliana's face. Just then, Joe arrives to tell them that he couldn't find a way out of the Pacific States for them, and demands to retrieve the film. They fight over it, but Joe eventually takes the film and goes to the Nazi embassy. Shortly after, Juliana and Frank reach out to Karen and Lem for help. After the resistance fighters realize how important it is to get back the film, they propose an escape plan for the couple. In exchange for getting them on a boat to Mexico, Juliana has to get the film back from Joe and kill him. Considering her chemistry with Joe, Juliana refuses, but Lem suggests that she lure him out of the embassy, and he will take care of the rest. Cut to the next scene, Inspector Kaido and Sergeant Yoshida confront the Nazi shooter who shot the crown prince. To Yoshida's surprise, Kaido shoots the man in the head, explaining that it is what needs to be done which means that he would not want a war to break out between the Germans and the Japanese if the Japanese knew that the shooter was a Nazi agent. For Smith, he goes on a hunting trip with Heydrich before assuring his wife not to let Heydrich near the children if in case he doesn't return. As they travel to the woods, Heydrich confesses to Smith that his intentions to remove him were simply a recurring theme for the Germans, in which senior officers often target people like Smith who strive for the common good. The show then shifts to the capital of the Greater Nazi Reich, Berlin, where an officer questions Wegener in his car about his unexpected appeal to meet the Führer personally. Wegener assures that there is no foul play, and he is finally happy to be back home. Meanwhile, Joe is back at the Nazi embassy. Ambassador Rias introduces him to Officer Oliver Deals. When Deals and Joe are left alone, Deals asks if his mission was a success. Joe informs him that it is classified information, as Clem had warned Joe over the phone to avoid Deals at all costs because of her reports to Heydrich. Meanwhile, Inspector Kaido visits Tegomi and informs him that Juliana Crane will no longer be allowed to work at the building due to her connection with Frank. The latter is the suspected assassin of the Crown Prince. Kaido also reveals that he knows that Tagomi helped Wegener make his escape from the Pacific States, but ensures that he will remain silent for the sake of securing the Japanese Empire. At the Nazi headquarters in Berlin, Wegener reunites with his family before embarking on his final mission to kill Hitler. He bids them a final goodbye and a tearful and heartbreaking farewell, unsure whether he will get to see his family again. Back in San Francisco, at the gun factory, Ed tries to melt Frank's gun. Unfortunately, when his boss checks on him, he drops the gun. The boss then inspects the gun only to find that it is what the Kempeitai are after. Meanwhile, Inspector Kaido finally receives a letter from Tokyo that forces him to commit seppuku as he has failed to capture the assassin of the crown prince. Just then, Yashida walks up to him and shows that they have found the criminal weapon or particularly Frank's pistol. Stopping Kaido from finishing seppuku. Cut to the next scene, Juliana enters the German embassy as a woman trying to receive a traveling visa. She runs into Joe on his way out, so the two escape through an alleyway. She then angrily lashes out at Joe for not telling the truth about his Nazi identity. Startled by this revelation, Joe manages to dismiss Juliana's discovery as fake and reveals to her that he also watched one of the films that worshipped Joseph Stalin in 1954. Even though the Nazis executed Stalin in 1949, he then asks for her help to get back to New York so that he can clear Juliana and her loved one's names from the Nazi high command. Upon hearing this, Juliana is left in a dilemma and needs to decide whether to rescue Joe or move forward with the resistance's mission to kill him. Sometime later, Kaido and Yoshida interrogate Ed regarding the pistol that he was trying to destroy. They tell him that his gun matches the description provided by the witnesses who saw the same exact gun. They then ask him if he was the one to shoot the crown prince instead of Frank. The show then takes us to the Austrian Alps, where Wegener makes his way for his meeting with Hitler, who sits in a profoundly fortified headquarters. Meanwhile, Heydrich still has Smith as his captive and reveals that he intends to betray Hitler and conquer the rest of the Japanese Empire, especially America. Karen notifies Frank that there is a change of plan, 
and they need to head to the docks right now. This comes after the realization that the Kempeitai had captured the Crown Prince's shooter, a man that works in a factory. Soon after, Frank realizes that Ed might be in danger and calls his grandfather, who only ridicules Frank for putting his grandson's life at risk. Hurriedly, Frank rushes to the police station, where the officers restrain him from rescuing Ed. Back at Hitler's headquarter, Wegener approaches Hitler, who is watching some of the Grasshopper films, depicting scenes of the Soviet onslaught on Berlin in an alternate World War II. Hitler asks Wegener to join him, but the latter can't quite grasp what he sees. So, he asks what the film is about, to which Hitler replies, what might have been, suggesting an alternate reality. Wegener fails to take a shot at Hitler. Hitler tells him that he knew Wegener was afraid to kill him, and also says that it was Heydrich who sent for him. Hitler further warns that a war will ensue because of his actions, and offers Wegener to die honorably while also sparing his family's life. On the other side of the world, Heydrich asks Smith to join his mission to start a war. The show builds tension until the telephone rings, and Heydrich picks it up. To his shock, the man who answers on the other side of the phone is not Wegener, but Hitler himself. Suddenly, Wegener is shot and in between the chaos, Smith and Heydrich race for their firearms. Luckily, Smith defends himself and incapacitates Heydrich. It is later revealed that Wegener chose not to kill Hitler, and instead committed suicide. At the docks, Juliana leads Joe to his death. As Joe asks Juliana to leave with him, he realizes that it was all a trap. He pleads with her to believe that he isn't the man she saw in the film and tells her that she changed him. Juliana believes in him, so she helps him escape onto a boat meant for her, and Frank before Karen and Lem rush to kill him. In the final scene, as Tagomi rethinks about everything that has happened, he heads to a public square to meditate. He removes the heart necklace from his pocket, which belongs to Juliana, and closes his eyes. As he concentrates on his meditation, sounds whir around him, back and forth, and his surroundings start to blur out. When he opens his eyes, he is on the same spot but in an alternate timeline, where the United States won World War II. He sees an American flag hanging from the pole, rock music blaring over some speakers, and a newspaper nearby showing a report of the blockade against Cuba. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching.